So, questions from the viewers. If you had a choice to pick either the Bronco or the Bronco Sport, you had to pick only one on the count of three. Answer right after three. One, two, three. Bronco, Bronco. Sport. Why in the world did you pick that one? Sorry. My, uh, my husbandly instincts to argue with his wife kicked in. So... <laughs>Hi, welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Sean. <laughs> I'm Jill. And this is going to stay the way it is because she's laughing so hard. Um, so, first off, this is just a quick video on basically a couple things that a couple people have asked me. Uh, both uh, some subscribers and also people that I work with. Now, they know I'm getting the, the big Bronco and we currently purchased the uh, baby Bronco and they asked me which one which one's better and it's kind of a hard thing to answer um, so they're not in the same category one bit they're two totally different vehicles even though they're both Broncos uh, four-wheel drive off-road capability on-road capability they are designed specifically for a certain purpose so let me explain it this way. So describing the Bronco and the Bronco Sport is kind of like describing or comparing a screwdriver and a hammer. <laughs> now, <clears throat> yes, it, it does sound like they're totally different, but honestly, they're not because they're both tools used to uh, secure items, whether it be a nail or a screw. Now, you can use a hammer to drive in a screw. Trust me, I've watched somebody do it. I'm just dumbfounded that they actually did it. If you're one of those people, for God's sakes, go get a screwdriver. Please don't do that. <clears throat> now, on the other hand, everybody's done it. They got tired of trying to find a hammer for whatever reason they can't find it. And they all they have is a screwdriver, so they just basically turn the screwdriver around and pound it in with the nail or pound the nail in with the butt end of a screwdriver. I've done it. Uh, for some reason, I can't find my hammers all the time. And I'll give you a hint. If you can't find your hammer, look under your wife's or your girlfriend's uh, pillow. It's usually there. I'll show the clip right here where I found my hammer. What? She's playing. She's playing uh, like she doesn't know. I know. They know. They'll see the picture. Okay. If I was a hammer, where would I be? Uh, let me see. Oh, here we go. Anyways, you're so full now, of crap. <laughs> as with the as with the Bronco and the Bronco Sport, obviously the Bronco Sport was more of a suited for the road, and we'll explain that for why it's done that way or why it's suited for the road versus the other one. The Bronco is mainly for off road. Uh, now, grant they can go either way. This one can obviously go off-roading, but not as much as the, uh, the Bronco. And you know, the Bronco can go on-road, obviously, but this one's going to be much more quiet, more comfortable, and have a smoother ride. Now, the Bronco has removable doors and removable roof. This one you can too. It's not gonna look pretty and you're not gonna be able to put it back together. Kind of like that hammer and the screw in, you're just not gonna look the same. It's gonna look really bad. It's gonna be a bad idea, but it can be done. We're not gonna do it. She's not gonna do it. She's not gonna let me do it. Oh, hell no. <laughs> but you know, <clears throat> it's one of those things you have to gauge on what you need. Uh, if you plan on doing off-roading and stuff like that, yeah, I mean, if it's just light off-roading, yeah, this will do. But if you're looking for what most people are, the mm -hmm. utilitarian type vehicle, yeah. you know, the off-road, real, you know, aggressive look, that you're going to look Max. for that. <laughs> yeah, your Mad Max, you know, <laughs> your closest thing to a Mad Max vehicle you can get, uh, that would be 
the Bronco. I mean, most people are buying the Bronco just for the looks themselves. I guarantee you, most of the people are not gonna take it off-roading that it's capable of, just like the Jeep. Uh, again, you do have a lot of people who, who describe most Jeeps as mall crawlers because they don't ever you know, go off-road. The closest they go off-road is to park in your front yard and that's it. So uh, where we plan on taking our vehicle out, uh, we do plan on taking this out in some off-roading adventures, probably not as much or as, you know, uh, drastic as the Bronco itself, but can this handle some of it? Absolutely. It's built for that. Uh, they designed this for that. I've, we've watched the videos where the Bronco can do a lot more. Again, I've heard people talking about how much noisier the ride is in the Bronco, kind of like the Jeep itself, where this is a lot smoother. Again, it's designed for more of an off, uh, on-road, where the Bronco is more of an off-road. On top of that, there comes a price point. Uh, depends on how much you really want to spend. So this right here, fully loaded with everything in it, is right around 40 grand. Uh, maxed out with all the options, give or take a couple thousand, right about 40 grand. The Bronco, on the other hand, fully loaded, all the options on it. I'm talking winch and bumpers and, and grill guard and you know all the other stuff. It's uh, right around 65. And that's something that kind of deters people from going towards the big Bronco because they don't want to pay an extra 25 grand for something they're never going to take off road where this is capable of doing light duty off-roading uh, also this is going to be a lot smaller than the uh, big bronco i've watched videos of the big bronco so putting stuff up like this on the racks and stuff is going to be a lot more difficult for the big bronco especially if you get the soft squash packets with the 35 inch tires that's why we when she got this we kind of talked about it and i told her yeah we perfect for all the accessories that we do, all the toys that we buy and stuff like that for going, whether kayaking, surfing, uh, light camping, uh, and you know other racks we wanna get up there, whether it be bike or fishing or whatever, that's what this vehicle's for. The other ones could basically main for, mainly for uh, camping and off-roading and long trips. The one, other ones are also gonna be more comfortable. Well, I wouldn't say more comfortable, but it's gonna have a lot more amenities in it than this does. This is basically your standard badlands it's not your leather interior and stuff like that again it's all depends on what you want to spend yeah this isn't fully loaded yeah this isn't fully loaded where the bronco is gonna be fully loaded not the winch or anything like that but it's gonna be pretty comparable to one of the highest highest uh, spec ones um want to talk about construction so with the ride comes the way the construction of the vehicle is and i'll let her talk so she works for a body shop she does a lot of stuff with vehicles she knows a lot and i'm impressed i'll let her talk i'll just sit here at all <laughs> all right so the bronco sport such as this is a unibody construction now what a unibody is the entire vehicle is one solid structure, including your glass. So everything is a structural composite. The windshield and the side glasses, they're all part of the structure, whereas something else with body on frame is. Oh, so uh, the body on frame is basically what it, exactly what it is. Uh, the easiest way I can describe it is you can basically take a body off the frame and still have a rolling chassis. This, you can't. The body is your frame, per se. It's you can't take the engine or you can't take the body off and still have a rolling chassis because right. everything's bolted straight to the body, whether it be the suspension, the engine, yeah. transmission, stuff like that. Where the big truck, I don't know if you can see it, that right there, I could actually take off the cab and the bed and still have a rolling functional truck. Mm -hmm. Because the engine and the transmission are still mounted to the frame where yeah. everything is bolted on to the actual body of this thing. Yeah, so that's the that's the easiest way we can describe it. If people, A lot of people ask her for uh, the explanation for it, for whether, you know, body on frame or unibody and stuff like that. Again... Well, or they'll come into the shop and say, hey, I'm worried about my frame. And I'm just uh, like, you don't have a frame. 
Yeah, a, <laughs> lo a like, lot what? of people. A lot of people don't know, and uh, most off-roaders will already know what a body-on-frame versus a yeah. unibody is. But like I said, that's what makes it more expensive. Is you have basically a frame underneath it where this is an easier manufacturing process, and you basically just have a body, everything bolted to. Um, now, like I was saying before, the body on frame is mainly for off-roading and towing and like your heavier, like that. Your your heavier, heavier vehicles. Thing. Where this is mainly for just comfort. Uh, these ride, these comfort street rides, and yeah. maybe light uh, four light. by fouring. You yeah. don't want to go too hot and heavy with this because you will twist the body. Yeah, with this, you got to be careful with. If you plan on going, you know, big time rock crawling, you wouldn't do it in this. No. Uh, you'd twist the body and it would basically be three wheeling everywhere you want because one <laughs> wheel wouldn't be touching the ground. Uh, whereas a body on frame, you're not going to, I wouldn't say you wouldn't, but you're not going to do it most most likely you know you're still going to twist it twist the frame if you do too much or if you hit too hard but all in all that's an off-road vehicle for the street and this is a on-road vehicle for off-roading if that makes sense you know it's mainly for on-road occasional off-roading the bronco is built for off-road with uh i wouldn't say occasional on-roading use but as long as you can get around the annoyance of the the wind noise and the uncomfortable ride and stuff like that again i've never ridden in one i don't know what it feels like uh both my vehicles are body on frame construction my toyota forerunner and the big Beast. truck behind me uh, <laughs> both but, my car to you know, right, body. so <laughs> my little skateboard and uh it's whether which one's better or not basically comes down to you uh whoever is looking at it if you are undecided what do you want to do what are you willing to do with it uh, are you willing to are you gonna go off-roading do you need a capable vehicle that does towing and uh, you know big time off-roading or you just need something to get from point A to point B point, ba point A to point B and be able to do it in style and look as good as this truck or SUV or take your boat or your kayaks out to the yeah. lake or something so it, it all depends on what you're one, what you need, two, what you're willing to spend. Because again, there's from the top of the line, I'm going top of the line because nobody buys the base model for the most part. Everybody buys like the middle to top. So if you go to the top of the line, it's- This well, is excluding the first edition. Yeah, this first edition, nobody's got it in one unless you reserved one, they're all sold out. So I, all, I never include that because that's pretty much irrelevant. Um, so for this, the Bronco Sport is 40,000 and the Bronco is 65. Now that's top of the line, everything bolted on, all the necessities, yeah. including coffee maker and crap like that, uh, whatever people want to put on it, uh, straight from the factory. So- uh, Hit one expensive bottle opener. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I do have to say this one, this was pretty cool. I, I do like the bottle opener, but I'll, well, that's for another video. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Does the Bronco? Does the Bronco have one? Mm -hmm. Oh shit! That's I'm pretty sure the Bronco, the big Bronco, will have the bottle opener. My on the bottle shine. opener is going to be way more expensive than hers. Anyways, uh, I hope this video is helpful. Um, if anybody's on the fence, you know, it's you got to look at which one you want and what you're willing to do with it. And like I said. Most people that buy the Bronco, I guarantee you, is just like the Jeeps and they're buying it just for that utilitarian look and they want to make it look like they have a giant you know, off-road vehicle, but they're probably afraid to drive over a curb, much less go off-roading. So, hope you liked the video and hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye.